long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Or, last weekend in Tiverton, Devon, I created an insert for Star Wars Imperial Assault. Courtesy of E-Raptor, I've been asked to film this time-lapse for Gaming Rules YouTube channel. We got confused at first. There are no written instructions, just numbered parts. We started putting it together using our Jedi-like mind powers, but then decided it better just to do the obvious and follow numerically the parts sheet. The good news for the audience watching this is that you cannot hear my Wookiee impressions whilst building it. Ah, a bit like that. This insert is for the base game, plus all of the expansions. It stores in the main box, as well as one large expansion box and one smaller expansion box. There's definite need with this insert for better instructions. Obviously, not enough bothans died to give us the information we need to build this insert. But we managed it uh, all the same. It wasn't a one shot in a million, but it was close enough. Simply just slotting the pieces in and clicking together was quite satisfactory. Um, but it would have been nice to have some full set of instructions saying, first pop these out, then select this, then do that. I'd say the insert is well designed, very clever in how it all slots together, without the need for glue, or make a very good job of making your game look less like a scruffy looking nerf herder. Audio commentary on a time lapse video isn't the most exciting thing, and I'm sure... Everybody watching this is enjoying my dulcet tones. Uh, maybe now will be a good time for a second Wookiee impression. It's more of a happy Wookiee than, a, than an angry Wookiee. Like, it's a bit of an angry Wookiee. Um, what other impressions have we got for Darth Vader? What? Your lack of faith disturbs me. Well, the other Star Wars impressions go beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. I would do a Jar Jar Banks impression, but I think Game Rules would lose quite a few subscribers if I did. Once assembled, I had to guess where most of the components were designed to fit inside the box. The cards, I said, were labelled. The smaller minis all fit into the small sections, with the exception of our good buddy Darth Vader, whose cloak was a bit tight in the slot. The medium-sized Nexu minis, for example, I had no idea where to fit them in. I had to search online for an image someone else had posted of the insert being filled with the, all of the minis, and to find that I had to have them in, but in sideways. As well as creating storage for all of the many, many minis, there are also small containers for all the individual components that have an acrylic lid so you can use these whilst playing. The storage for the cards also has little engraved names so you can categorise all your cards for easy access and fit both sleeved and unsleeved. Unfortunately, there's no storage for the two largest minis, the ATSTs. You need to get storage for these yourselves. And the board pieces, these are just loose. One of the issues for setup is the time it takes to find the board pieces required for the map you're playing on. So some organisation of these would have been helpful and it does give a slight space for filling in the manuals as well in the main box, which I thought was a nice touch. As you can see, when fully assembled, it slots in nicely inside three of the boxes. It does mean you can recycle the other boxes if you are that way inclined, or just have them up in your loft if you're also that way inclined. Thanks for watching the time-lapse video today for the Star Wars Imperial Assault insert. May the Force be with you, always. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.